What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Heavyweight Nation podcast. And today, as you can see, Matthew's down below me this time. You know, I like that it, he kind of moves around the screen throughout all the episodes. But we have a really great guest, you know, multiple time All American, you know, just an absolute hammer from Michigan. We got Cam Amin. Cam, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Of course. This is uh, course, Cam's man. second time around. Uh, you know, a lot of these episodes you guys are going to start seeing us produce. We're going to kind of start catching up with some of the guys um, that we talked to last year during the offseason. You know, they've been doing some really exciting things. I think we actually caught up with you like the day before Nationals last year. Was it the day before Big Tens? It was the day before one of the really big tournaments. I know you were you were at a hotel. You weren't even back yep. in, in Michigan at the time. So that was... um. That was that was awesome, and you know we're we're pumped to get you back on the show. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. Thank you guys again for having me again. Of course, man. No, not a problem. You're no, you guys, you guys from Michigan, always welcome on the show. You know, gotta love the Big Ten. Yeah. So we uh, had some other Big Ten talent on today. Um, we talked to uh, Dean Hamidi from Wisconsin, um, and we kind of want to ask you the same thing, just to open it up with a with a question. Um, where do you think the Big Ten stands compared to the rest of NCAA wrestling? Yeah, I mean, Big Ten is just it's it's a gauntlet. Big Ten tournament is I mean, you can see all the guys that that do pretty well at the Big Ten tournament do well at the NCAA championship too as well. Um, I mean, it's how many NCAA champs have come out of the Big Ten? It's about four or five, and then you go into how many finalists and how many All Americans, and look at the teams that are, are that have won it the last what is it like ten years. Oh, big yeah, like I would say probably 15. Top top yeah. five, top six, top ten. I mean, there are, the Big Ten is just – it's it's brutal. And it's – but I think that's why everyone that's in the Big Ten loves it, and that's what they're here for. Yeah, and I, th- yeah, I think definitely. the fans and I think everybody else has to agree, you know. And that, I feel like it's been a staple like that for, for a long time now that the Big Ten is kind of – solidifies itself as you know if you're a really good high school wrestler you go to a school in the big 10 oh, so yeah. obviously yourself and you know we talked a little bit last time you were here about your you know your your awesome call you know high school career and you know you've had very successful college career so talk a little bit about this season and kind of how this season went for you yeah um i mean starting out coming out of last year placed fourth at the tournament um and then Took some time off. Uh, it was just a lot. I went like, like three years straight, no break, just like right into it, training with like Miles and Alex, just helping them get ready for like the Olympics and the world team trials and stuff like that. So last year going into it, it was like I need a little break. So I stepped away for about a month, um, no wrestling, did some light like lifts and, and runs and stuff, but I just stayed away from the mat and then uh, decided to get back on and – I think it was like June, second day back, um, wrestling with Logan and uh, me and him wrestling. And we had an accident where I rolled over my arm and tore my UCL tendon right off my bone. And so it was just like, that was like a six month process. I was like, just getting back into it. So I missed a lot of the season. That's why I was out majority of the season. Um, But then, yeah, so then it was just like staying consistent with everything I can do besides the wrestling part. So it was, it was running, it was lifting, it was even walking at some points just, just to get healthy and, and stay in, in shape and, and to get those workouts in. But uh, this season, I, it was a different one. It had its ups and downs, um, a lot of injuries, and, and that's how it goes sometimes. I mean, Mason, like we were talking, uh, Mason, um, I mean, if you look at last year, how he did, he was injured most of the season as well. Mm-hmm. But it's it's just everyone has a season where it's like you're injured a lot. Um, this is part of the sport, so it was it was a lot. Um, and like I said, I was coming back, finally got back, and then I was wrestling Carson, and uh, season momentum was starting to get into it and and starting to build confidence a little bit more. I'm starting to trust my elbow and just get back into it, and then all of a sudden another injury happens, and then uh, that kind of set me back a little bit again. I tore. Didn't tear. I have a, had a grade like two, almost grade three tear in my right MCL on my knee. So that uh, set me out for like two, three weeks. I mean, I was off the mat for about two weeks and then got back on. And, and it was like, all right, we got to get ready for at least try to get one or two more matches in before Big Tens came around. And then uh, we got that match in um, at the Central Match, last match. And uh, 
the knee was still in that, not a hundred percent, but it, it was good enough to wrestle. And then uh, we get to the big tens and get into wrestling with, uh, what's his name? Patrick Kennedy. Um, and then I tear the other one in that match. So it was just like, man, <laughs> I catch a break. I didn't, break getting hit over and over again. Yeah, literally, man. It was it was a roller coaster. It was it was a crazy season. But um, yeah. So then that happens, and it's like I take a week off, or I take another week off right before NCA. So I was struggling a little bit mentally, um, obviously physically as well. But I think the coaches here at Michigan, they they know what they're doing. Um, I give a lot of my credit to Jared Spencer. Uh, he's one of our mental coaches that uh, just helped me get through a lot of that stuff. And then I had uh, guys like Alex Derringer that that helped me get through it as well. And so then we get to NCAAs and wrestling with two bum knees, but everyone does it. Uh, you want to be good, you got to be able to wrestle in every situation. So um, just strapped him up, taped it up, and just went. And didn't wrestle too good. And I mean, obviously not uh, not happy where I ended, but I am. Uh, fourth in the country is obviously not not a bad thing. But, yeah, coming in this year, I won an NCAA title, and then all that stuff kind of happened, sent me back. But at the end of it, I think it's just going to make me better. I mean, man, and, but still, yeah. get, getting to that point, you know, getting getting to fourth in the country with two, you know, two bum knees and a, and a kind of working elbow is pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Like, man. I don't think there's a lot of people that would be able to, you know, put themselves through all of that and then, you know, still – you know, be able to land themselves a spot on the podium in, you know, at, at the toughest tournament, you know, that's, you know, that exists. So I mean, just congratulations to you. And I mean, again, good job on the Michigan coaching staff, just kind of keeping you into it and keeping, you know, your mental rate. Cause I'm sure, I'm sure it was hard. I'm sure it was, you know, mentally, I'm sure you were struggling a little bit, you know, thinking, you know, that this could possibly end your career, you know, especially the second knee, you know, now, you know, one's bad enough, but two knees at that point, you're like, oof. That's some yeah, Spencer no. Lee stuff. It's literally, it was it was tough, and I that I mean, speaking of Spencer Lee, I, I mean, you see a guy like that go through NCAA tournament with two bum knees as well. So it's like, why why can't I do it? So that's kind of like the mindset I took, and it took me a second to start thinking like that. Um, the one that hurt was that got me down the slumps was right before NCAs. Yeah, and the Big Tens. I mean, I was like, oh god, yeah. <laughs> I've already yeah. missed so much of the season, and then now it's 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 happening now right before NCAs when I need that work in and just a little improvements and staying in shape and stuff. But like I said, the coaches and the people I'm surrounded by here is just their support and and everything they do is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean to be plagued with that many injuries though, and still just um come out as one of the top guys is just so impressive. You know, thank just you. Thank all you. season you're battling demons pretty much you know i swear and you. still found a way to get through it and uh, respect to you for that man yeah and i think uh, a big question a lot of the fans to know is is there more a means in the michigan pipeline is there <laughs> any more of you any more siblings any more cousins is there any more a means coming through college wrestling anytime soon i mean not not in this generation right now uh i'm the last of the six that have gone here but um, I know my brother has two daughters now. Uh, obviously, he wants more kids, and and then Miles and Malik are getting a little older. Who knows when when they'll start having kids? But I think that's going to be the next generation. And next generation, you know, maybe it's man, maybe it's two two boys each guy, and it's like now we got eight coming through. <laughs> I mean, it, it has been incredible. I mean, I feel like no matter what time you watched wrestling, you know, in the last however many years, there was always an Amin, and he was always a top five. You know, yep. there was never yeah. there was never a bad Amin. I mean, obviously, you know, it's just been incredible. I mean, and your time at Michigan, you know, will will not go unforgotten. And I think, you know, that that whole Wolverine squad this year just, I mean, they looked great. I mean, you know, yourself, Will Lewan, Mason Paris, you know, they all just looked incredible. Yeah, yeah. They uh they worked their butts off in the summer for sure. I mean, we knew coming in it was gonna be gonna be a tougher year. I mean, if you last year's team was one in one in a million, kind of. Um, but Coming in this year, I mean, they worked their butts off. Uh, I got to watch a lot of the practices and just to see the guys that that worked hard and the guys that wanted it. You can tell pretty quick, and they they put it together. Yeah, I mean, and what what was that like? You know, being able to have you know a guy you mentioned earlier, like Mason Paris. You know, not just being you know a teammate, but also being your roommate, and I'm sure being a super you know a super close friend. 
So, oh, yeah. you know, what's it like, you know, and how proud are you guys? I'm sure all at the house proud of him for, oh, yeah. you know, really, really putting together one of the most incredible seasons we've seen from a heavyweight, probably since Adam Kuhn, you know, like one of the most dominant seasons a heavyweights put together. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, we definitely all proud of him here. I mean, he knows it and uh, we celebrated with him. He, he knows where we all stand around him and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, living with these guys, it's, it's 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 something different um i mean we live the right way do the right things so we get in the season and it's it gets strict i mean we're all in bed by 10 30 11 o'clock and it's just it makes it easier it makes it a lot easier when you surround yourself with those type of guys that that want to win and want to drive to win and become a hot trophy winner and, and an NCAA champion um and to see the work that just put in in the summer it's just it's constantly like we kind of challenge each other but we're working with each other at the same time. Definitely. And I think another thing a lot of the fans want to know is, is what's next for you? You know, what do you, what do you feel? You know, are you going to, you're going to keep wrestling? You're going to use that, you know, I'm sure great Michigan degree you got. Are you going to, are you going to go fighting. ahead and, and fight? Are you going to, what's, what's the plan for you? I mean, I, I still got two more years here, so I'm going I'm to be around for another two years. And then uh, I've dabbled with uh, thinking about fighting. Um Obviously, I think all wrestlers think about it. <laughs> and uh, I think this summer I'm going to get some training in with uh, a place down here called Detroit Jiu-Jitsu. Um, they got some some uh, fighting guys. They got a guy right now that's I think he's like 21 years old and he's about to make his uh, pro debut in the MMA or UFC. So it's just like get these guys and, and go work out with them and then show them some wrestling and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think I'm going to – obviously, I think I'll wrestle and then – do maybe one or two Olympic runs, maybe switch to fighting. Um, who knows where it takes me from there? Yeah, and I mean, I think, you know, we we talked with Nate Jackson earlier today, a, a guy who, you know, obviously wrestles full time. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, some of the things he was saying, you know, it's just, you know, compared to when he was, you know, coming up in the sport compared to now, the opportunities that, you know, you guys have, you know, the amount of, you know, partnerships and friendships, I'm sure that you've, you know, made with, guys from UFC, the guys from, you know, Bellator, guys from WWE, like, you know, the possibilities are really endless for you. A lot of you, you know, top 10 guys at your weight class. So, you know, what, you know, obviously a career in fighting isn't anything crazy. You know, I know, you know, it was, you know, Cejudo and Gaethje and DC and Brock Lesnar, you know, they were the OGs. And I feel like guys now, like, like Bo Nickel and, you know, Bryce Meredith and, you know, I know, um, yeah, guys like that have really just been able to kind of pave the path for the guys, you know, now to just kind of follow in their footsteps. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when you see guys like that and then uh, you see how they're like some of the top guys to come out of their like out of country in their college careers. And I mean, some of the best guys in, in college ever. And you see them going out there and just for their wrestling and they're dominating. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, how do you not want to kind of fight? And I mean, and just see how it goes. It's, yeah, it's, it's like watching them do it. It's kind of makes you want to do it. You know, weirdly enough, and don't take this in the wrong way. I could just see you being a fighter. I feel like <laughs> you have like like the face of like a UFC fighter. Yeah, I get I get told that that a lot. Not gonna lie, mm-hmm. <laughs> I get told I, I came out. My mom um always told me when I uh when I was born, I came out with two black eyes and like a broken nose. It looked like <laughs> she was like I knew he was either gonna be a fighter or a wrestler from then. So. Yeah, man. I, I think, you know, just like you said, being able to have that option after college to, you know, maybe I do want to go make, you know, make a world team and try, you know, try to make an Olympic team and do all the stuff like that. I mean, that's going to be awesome, man. Thank you. you know, so, you know, other than that, you know, let's, you know, let's get to know Cam Amin a little bit. You know, what yeah. what are you guys doing outside of wrestling? I know your house has to be, you know, uh, you know, all, you know, a good time together. What are some oh, things yeah. that you and the guys get together and do to kind of take a little bit of a break and kind of get your minds off of competing? Yeah, I mean, um, we like, we like music. So, like, we'll go to festivals. I mean, we'll go to concerts. We'll, we'll go to, uh, like, big, like, Faster Horses Festival, stuff like that. And then, uh, honestly, as it, we hang a lot. We hang out with a lot of our teammates as well. Um, I always have the guys over our house, just having a good time and relaxing and, and just hanging out. Um, it's it's always been fun doing that. I mean, we our summers are usually like wrestling a lot, but some of the times we get away. We I got a cabin up in Kalkaska, Michigan, up north a little bit. Like we'll go up there and ride four wheelers. I remember COVID year, we had a little two week shutdown, so me, Mason, Will. 
Uh, my other roommate, Bob and Kurt, we all packed up and went up north and, and drove snowmobiles around for, for a couple of days. So That's it's just dope. like anytime we can get out and just step away from wrestling because, I mean, it's just like if you, a long any season. Top guys, yeah, any of the top guys in the country, I mean, it's people say, oh, when's your season over? Season really don't end. <laughs> yeah, no, never end does. You're wrestling all year round. So it's any time away we go to Florida. I mean, I just started picking up golfing. Um, there you go. The first time, so. See how that goes this summer. Awesome. You know, and I feel like we've been hearing that a lot lately. A lot of wrestlers are kind of getting into golf. Yeah. So, um, you know, better everybody better watch their shoulders. Be careful of the <laughs> shoulders, guys. We don't need uh, 40, exactly. 40 guys out next year all with torn labrums. We need to <laughs> relax yeah. a little bit on the golf course, maybe. But Definitely uh, before next season, try to, you know, focus on getting healthy, focus on yeah. preventing yeah. what happened this season. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, man, Dude, and I really I know Matt, Matthew uh, Matthew has some good questions for you, so I'll go ahead and kind of pass it off to Matthew here and let him ask you uh, a couple of things uh, that we've came up to, came up came up with together. Perfect. Firstly, I know I didn't have this one like written down or anything, but I I want to know like how was that that year with Suriano? Yeah, um, <laughs> I mean he he is a he's a good guy. I mean if you get to know him, um, he's he's pretty. I wouldn't say like a lot of people or the videos and the internet portrays him as like you could say weird a little bit but uh if you get to know him and you talk to him I mean obviously he has his things but he's pretty normal I mean he's it's just like any conversation you hold to anyone else like how we're talking here yeah um, I mean yeah he just came back like a man on a mission and literally he did I mean that mission. guy is the stuff he does and, and the way he does it it's just ridiculous I mean he's everything to the book like his way he sees like I remember before the NCAA finals last year in Detroit, I walked past his room and he had sage in the hallway and vibrations and red light going. I mean, he takes it seriously. And that's where people kind of see it as like, oh, he's crazy. But like, that's what he does. And he, he I, love it. It. I love yeah, it. I love it. I think it's man. awesome. I, I mean, think it's yeah. awesome. Like when you get a guy that hones in like that and like really like does everything in his possibility to win. I mean, I think it's it's good to have a guy like that around. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, that dude, it was just being around him and just the stuff he did. I mean, his functional patterns he would do before practice. <laughs> it looked like he's running in slow-mo, but that's what he did. And it was just like, it was, it was honestly, it was awesome to see and just like what he did and just kind of get a different like perspective of like what some guys do. Does anybody know yeah, where he's at now? The, um, the He was center. in Ann Arbor recently. He was up here training for a few days. And then I think he went back home to, I think it was New Jersey. A little bit, so Jersey. I don't know. I think I think he's like back and forth. Doesn't really know where he wants to pick a spot at yet. Where he wants the RTC at? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I think yeah. he has a he has definitely has a bright future on on the freestyle scene, one hundred percent. Oh yeah. But I I do think that like having someone like Nick Soriano, I mean, of course you guys have the best of the best, but also just introducing someone new to that team and in that environment someone who's so intense and just so it. into wrestling yeah. that i feel like that elevates the room just by someone like the, being there it did it definitely did and you could tell like just by the way like when he got on campus and you get pat brucky also i mean he was a workhorse as well so it's just like when you get those guys in those in the room and you see how hard they work it's just like it drives the younger guys up it drove me up to like even work harder and and to challenge these guys while they challenge me so i mean just having those guys like that around the room is it definitely is like a big boost to to everyone around. I I honestly forgot that they, they like all these people were there at once. Yeah. Like, what a team! Like holy man! Like they're lucky that Mason Paris didn't have a year. I know like, this year, last year, like I that would have put that team on like such a higher like Brucky Siriano him at firing in all cylinders. Like that would have been crazy team. Yeah, Absolutely it would have been crazy. Would have been nuts. That team would have been nasty. Yeah. So I know, obviously, like you said, you, yourself, you got two more years left of uh, of wrestling at Michigan, and I think we're excited to see. You know, obviously, like you said, a little bit bump, a little bit roughed up this year, but next season coming back fully healthy. I mean, keep the eye on the prize, though. You know. Oh, yeah. So um, one of the questions we always like to ask everybody is, in your opinion, who was the toughest opponent you've ever had? You know, in your career so oh, far, cool. O'Toole. Yeah, I mean, he's be, he's the guy that's beat me now three times, knocked me out of the championship all three years. Damn, that's we've heard the that's, that's the second O'Toole we've heard today. I yeah, mean, he I mean, also said O'Toole as well. He rides hard. He's good in every position. He's got a weird style. I think that's just like 
he's good and and it's uh that's my my goal is to work towards obviously beating him but to be a NCAA champ so he's he's been in the way the last three years and now I'm trying to turn that outcome and change it sounds good man yeah, sounds, sounds now good. you being getting healthy so I think exactly. it's gonna be a fun match to watch yeah exactly so that's that's a big goal is just to stay healthy and, and get into it with yeah. them. And I mean, you're a guy that has wrestled with some of the greats, you know, you've wrestled against, you know, guys like Wick and, and Marinelli. So what was that like wrestling, you know, in Carver Hawkeye? We always like to ask everybody who's, you know, get got the opportunity to wrestle at Iowa, you know, what what's that environment like? And how do you think it could affect some people that aren't really mentally prepared for it? Yeah, I, I haven't never, never wrestled in Carver, actually. You've never actually wrestled in Carver? Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, I was there. I was there this year. Okay, um, yeah. That's when I just got over the like I was starting to get over the injury and then I re injured it kind of like again at like practice a little bit. So it's like I stayed out and just let it heal up for big tens. But being there, I mean when uh Cassie Opie took Mason down, mm -hmm. I mean you, your ears echoed. Like it was your ears started ringing and it was it got so loud. And I was like, I I mean that was louder than like when I took Marinelli down last year at the NCAA tournament. I mean that they, I mean it was, it was crazy, dude. It was it was nuts, and uh, it definitely that that Culver effect is real. Yeah, yeah. we um, like it's I said, real. we talked to we talked to Trent Hilger um, on Saturday, and he said the same thing. He was like, I wrestled Cassiopeia in 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 Carver, and he was like, by the time the match was halfway over, I couldn't hear myself think. He was yeah. like, I lost my he like he was like I lost my mental. He was like, I really honestly it, that was it. My brain was just it was gone. It's nuts, dude. They it's it, it gets loud, and I mean, you get those fans that are just they're into the Perfect. sport, they're yeah. crazy. Um, I think that kind of what's it makes what that arena is a little bit is the, the fans, and I mean, you hear things that you shouldn't hear, but <laughs> people say it. People are drunk, and it, it comes out. But it, yeah. yeah, that that arena is nuts, and and just like the crowd and the people they bring there. That's why the I mean, they're used to it. But I guarantee you, if like you take them to like uh to Penn State, it's like like even Penn State when we wrestled there, the people they brought for that duel was it was nuts. It was just like, yeah. I mean, I sold I, out I, Bryce I wrestled Jordan that Center. Duel. Yeah, sold out Bryce Jordan Center, like just packed, yeah. packed, packed, yeah. packed with people. And they, they I think they set it up. They set it up kind of like the NCAA finals a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's pretty cool the way they set it up and uh yeah, they got like the entrance walk out with like the, the yep. carpet and you gotta run up onto the mat mm -hmm. and yeah it's a it's a crazy environment at penn state too they're getting up there i don't yeah. think the fans are as ruthless as they no. are in carver no. i think it's a lot more like family aspect there yeah. like it's a lot more like kids and like exactly. like families but i i've heard we need to get to carver we need we need to have great nation <laughs> you to, do, man. You to take a trip to carver so. and and just Hopefully they yeah. welcome heavyweight nation with open arms because if not, I don't know if I don't know if we'll be able to take it. I'm I'm chased to out. The building. We might, get, you might get chased out of there. Um, but yeah, but uh, talking about like you know just these all these arenas, like where is your favorite place to wrestle or a favorite place you have wrestled? Yeah, uh, I think Chrysler Center over here um, that we have in Ann Arbor. If you we get it like a good duel, I think like last year we had a couple couple like not sold out but packed packed duels and i know from previous years with just like the packed duels and the environment just being at home as well obviously that makes it uh that makes it make it makes it fun um but if i had to pick a non-home i thought penn state was pretty cool honestly just saw so it was packed i mean it was sold out they had the lights they had the walk the everything um but uh yeah i think penn state was pretty cool yeah, something that gets you nice and locked in for a, a duel, a match, a, a grinder. Exactly. Yeah, man. So, um, you know, of course, we're heavyweight nation, so we have to ask you food questions. So, <laughs> you know, best place to eat in Ann Arbor. What's the go to? What's the go to spot? You and the boys go get some get some grub. <laughs> um, there's some good places too. This thing, I mean, if. I'm trying to think it's hard to pick kind of it's just like there's so much different like food places to go to I mean there's anything and everything you want and they're like all pretty good um I know for me I like steak a lot so <laughs> I like steak houses um one of the best ones is like chop uh the chop house which is pretty good 
Um, and then we got a new uh new burger spot. One of my uh actually one of my boys opened up. It's called Tasty Burgers. And that that's uh that's a new shout spot. Shout out Tasty good. Burger. Shout out Chasty, Tasty Burger in Michigan. Shout out, shout out. <laughs> Literally. Shout out Literally. They're they're good. They got some good food. Shout out them. But uh I mean awesome, man. I mean, I'm sure that you know, as much as you are you are you a cut weight? Do you cut a lot of weight or no? Not really. Uh no, not really. I mean not I really walk around at like 173. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So not then bad. so you're you're pretty you're I'm sure you you probably stick to kind of a diet, but you're not really somebody that's you know, of that you can't go out on a weekend and like enjoy a nice dinner. Yeah, no, exactly. That's a, I mean, I stick to diets somewhat, but it's like a diet where I just can eat anything and everything, but it's like healthy food. It's not like I'm eating tubs of ice cream. <laughs> yeah. But like I can eat like three, four meals a day and my weight won't get over like 175. Speaking of ice That's cream, good, man. what's the go-to ice cream flavor? <laughs> uh uh chocolate chip cookie dough is good but i've been uh recently uh moose tracks we've moose done both those answers before yeah we yeah, really moose, have it must moose track been go. see i'm like a i'm a peanut butter or caramel kind of guy i like caramel dude those uh you know like the giardini uh mm-hmm. chocolate caramel squares yeah yeah that's i've been getting into those bad <laughs> <laughs> he's been, get, he's those, been getting into those bad. <laughs> those have been bad i and my uh my girlfriend told me hey, you gotta start you gotta come back a little bit <laughs> <laughs> you know it's easter coming they got those little bunnies now with I'm uh-huh. <laughs> getting me hungry bro. that's good that's good man what's the what's the go-to you just weighed in what are you eating after weigh-ins oh uh, yeah so my uh my weigh in after after uh after I weigh in, my meal is pretty much the same thing. It's a uh, peanut butter and jelly with honey on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and That's then, classic, yeah. <laughs> bunch of fruit, bunch of fruit, and then uh, I drink a. It's called a drip drop. It's like de- uh, dehydration relief type thing, but it's like it gets it hits you quick and it gives you a lot of energy as well. So I mean, I drink one of those, and then some water and some Gatorade. That's a classic. Yeah, it's That's like a, a pedialyte like- thing. Yeah, yeah, kind of. And then uh, at the end, I drink a, or I eat some soup as well. Some soup, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you got some classics there. You add the soup mm-hmm. in at the end, a little different. I mean, I feel yeah. like I feel like peanut butter and jelly is just like a classic. That's like everybody oh, yeah. at some point in their career was eating a PB&J after weigh-ins. And the honey is important. It gives you that quick energy, those quick sugars. Yeah. Quick, quick carbs, yeah. Quick, yeah quick that's carbs. Like in that soup at the end, I, I started doing that because it's like after you eat all this and drink all this stuff, your stomach's so small, it's like, uh, so I'm gonna settle. And then I start drinking and eating some soup, and it's it's been helping. What's what's the go-to soup? They uh they got Campbell's mm. <laughs> Campbell soup cooking for a chicken noodle. Nice. That's the, it's a classic, man. There you go. So if anybody's trying to you know get on that wrestling diet right there after <laughs> weigh-ins, you want to make sure you're you're going ready to compete like an all-American. You go ahead and <laughs> and follow follow Cameron steps on what to eat after weigh-ins. Exactly. You'll feel good I'm telling you that. Definitely. Definitely. And we've been asking this pretty much to everybody, you know, whether you were a, a wrestling shoe guy or not, but what's the, what's your favorite wrestling shoe you've ever worn throughout your whole, from elementary to youth up all the way till college? What's the best shoe you've ever worn? I had some Colots that I liked. I mean, they were comfortable. They're really comfortable. Um, But yeah, yeah, I had those when I was younger. I don't even remember, sixth grade, <laughs> like young, young. Um. But the more recent pair I've worn was uh Canaan store had the Michigan, I forget what they're called. Like Michigan like takedowns kind of. I don't I forget what they're called, but they were uh they're comfortable and they were they were sweet. <laughs> yeah. I feel like any shoe that's got like kind of that Michigan navy blue and gold colorway, they always look cool. They're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're cool. They're, they're pretty cool shoes. Yeah. I know like even sneaker wise, like the Michigan dunks, those are cool. Oh yeah. Yeah, go crazy. You got to get yourself a pair of Michigan Dunks. Yeah, I swear I do. I got, and, I, got uh, I got like four or five pairs of Dunks too, and I still <laughs> don't have the Michigan ones. <laughs> Anyone listening, yeah. if you got Michigan Dunks, send them over to yeah. Set up, set up yeah, Cameron exactly. way. What what yeah, that shoe do you wear? Ten and a half, ten and a half. Right, anybody that's got a ten and a half Michigan Dunk, Cameron means your guy, man. He's your guy. <laughs> he needs himself a pair of Michigan Dunks. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, just just crazy. I mean. I mean, you've been able to, you know, overcome so much this season, you know, and obviously like you gave a shout out. What's it like, you know, having a guy like Alex Derringer, you know, a guy who's competed at the highest level, 
you know, and I mean, and Miles as well. Miles has competed at super crazy levels. And, you know, now he's been wrestling a lot of freestyle and a lot of international. What's it like having guys like that in your, you know, in your back pocket, in your corner when, you know, things are really getting tough on you? Yeah, I mean, the, those guys are uh, are selfless, man. It's, uh, I could talk about them for hours and just let the people they are and, and on and off the mat. Um, yeah, having those guys around is just – it's really, really a pleasure. I mean, I, I can uh, – they're having workouts at like 9 o'clock with RTC guys, and Alex knows where I'm at. And I, I sat down with them and asked him a lot of questions, and he's hit me up, hey, let's go get some extra work in. And it's like I text him, hey, let's go get some extra work in. And we're there for each other, and it's like – it's 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 crazy and it's the same thing with miles and just having him just being like my family and then i'm really close to him he's my cousin but we're brothers i was gonna say i feel like a lot of people think you guys are brothers yeah yeah, and that's i mean it it really is we don't look at each other differently i look at him as a brother it's not like he's my cousin Mm -hmm. he is but he isn't that's somebody you went to battle with yeah yeah exactly that's someone i would take a bullet for for both him and alex um, I got I got really close to Alex this year and last year. Um, got to know who he is as a person and and how he is on the mat and just how selfless he is. I and mean, he wants he wants to work with the guys that want to put the work in. And he he'll, he'll share all his secrets with you and all everything he did as well. So just get to pick his brain a little bit. Yeah, and I think you guys have a a really slept on and really I think a really on the come up RTC. Oh yeah, you know, I know Nate. They just got Nathan Tomasello, who we talked to. Um, last week he's super nice guy oh yeah nato's really dope and i think you know having guys like that him and derringer in that rtc is only going to bring more people in i think yeah. you guys are going to start getting some really good i know is adam coon back as well is he yep adam coon's yeah. and making his return he's making his return i know uh that was a crazy story with him that had mm-hmm. to be that was crazy how he basically you know, pretty much almost made it, you know, to a 53 man roster in the NFL from not playing college football. That'll probably go down as one of the craziest things in sports history. It's nuts, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was, that was dope to see. And I think a lot of people are excited to see him come back to wrestling because he, oh, yeah. he was so dominant, such a dominant Greco wrestler. I think, you know, if he, he might mess around and put, you know, put us, you know, back on Greco a little bit. I mean, at least okay. him and I know, you know, Norton, uh, Max Nowray and, and I know Braxton Amos, also he'll he'll try to make another Greco team as well. I think um, a lot of guys are getting ready to start kind of wrestling Greco, which is is which is exciting because I feel like freestyle has been US is either one or two every yeah. year for the last what five six years now. Mm-hmm. And Greco, we've just we're we're not map. even yeah we're we're off the map at Greco almost. <laughs> like, yeah, no, Adam's been working. I mean, he's been in the room. Um. I've been because when I got done with NCAs, that my knee kind of just got worse from wrestling on it. I'm so sure. I've just been healing it up ever since, and uh, I've been going in that room and just watching practices again, and just getting a little little work in again. Um, but yeah, just especially having work. a partner like him for Mason, I'm sure him oh, yeah. having having him there for Mason has got to be oh, awesome yeah. because it's like Mason is one version of the heavyweight. Mason yeah. is that that kind of built up muscle quick moving guy. And then you got a guy like Adam Kuhn, who is just big, as big as they yes. come. Probably. I think he might be one of the biggest heavyweights we've seen in the last 10 years. Yeah. So he's, having, he's having him there to, ha- you know, kind of give Mason like a look of this is, you know, what the big version of heavyweight is. And this, you know, and yourself is the quick athletic. I'm sure that was great for some of his matches this year. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely was. I mean, just a guy trying to move a guy like that. <laughs> Hey, moving yeah, him out, yeah. man. Moving him out. Literally, the strength you need and the strength you have to to have to like find positions and stuff. It, it definitely helped him a lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, and just last question. I mean, we've asked you this, you know, last time you were on. Fifty times. Hundred fifty. Hundred fifty. Sometimes we've asked this question to everybody. I think. I think we switch it up there. I don't the, think we uh, switch it up. Not not the question, but who he gets to pick from. I I don't. We'll just stick with it. It's fine. <laughs> you could take three. We'll, we'll we'll add the RTC onto this as well. You can take three of your either, um, you either your Michigan teammates, so guys that are on the active roster, yep, or yep. people in the RTC, and you can take three of them with you into the zombie apocalypse. Who would they be, and why? <laughs> um, I'm gonna start off with Mason. I very I'm good a, choice. I hope I'm my big dude because <laughs> I also know. If I need to run, I'm faster than him. 
So it ain't gonna get me. <laughs> and it's gonna take a, a lot of zombies to take him down. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I take Mason. Um obviously I take Miles. Miles is, I just know that he knows some survival stuff. He's a little he's getting there. Um last one. Who would I pick? I mean I would say probably Ringer, but the thing is I don't know how just like maybe if he is how he is wrestling and, and in life he might be a badass too in the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> he might be. Definitely. Might be. I might mean be. I, I, I think he think, will be. I just think you know it's it, it, based in Paris, he might end up feeding you to the zombies. I don't That's know. That's what I'm saying. I gotta be careful with him. Like, <laughs> I don't know if he's I don't know if he might I don't think he'll let it get down to a foot race. I think he'll Yeah, he might not. He might grab me before he even knows it's over. Probably <laughs> over there. Yeah, just just right over your right over his shoulder, just right into the zombies. <laughs> nah, man, that's a dope team. Dope team. Uh, probably one of the better ones we've heard. I mean, any team that's got you know yourself and Miles Amin, who you know was obviously an incredible career in you know in NCAA and now internationally. And I mean, obviously yourself, who's had an awesome career as well. And you still, you still got a lot of time left. Yeah, still, exactly. Still got a ton, a ton of time left. You know, two more years to compete, two more shots at a at a national championship and hopefully you know we see uh that michigan michigan blue uh up top of the podium next season yep thank you guys thank of course you. man and one one final question we, uh, we've been closing up the podcast with is say something to the kids man say something to the the kids out there that look up to the michigan wolverines or look up to you you know say something to them yeah um i mean if once you listen to this and you kind of figure out how the season went with me it's just stay consistent uh, listen to your coaches and trust in them, trust in the process, um, and, and have fun with it. Uh, remember that it's just a sport. Um, everyone does it because we love it and we're here for it. And uh, we love the challenges, but, uh, don't forget that that guy wakes up the same way you do every morning. And so just stay consistent, have fun with it and, and fall in love with the sport. Yeah, man. It's wise words, man. Wise words from Cam and mean him again. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Yes. Um, and, you know, thank you. Thank you to everybody who's listening. We appreciate you guys and uh, see you guys next time.